Greetings, consciousness, and welcome back. And so in this podcast, we are talking about the metaphysical tree of life. The tree of life. Now, most of us have read Genesis. And in Genesis, there were two trees in the Garden of Eden. One tree... It's written of us the tree of good and evil. And this tree allegedly was eaten. Therefore, man was casted out of the garden. But the story tells you that on the eastern side, on the eastern side, meaning on the right hand side, there was another tree for the tree of life. And so what these two trees represent is the ego mind, the tree of good and evil, because you're Conscious mind produce good and evil. One minute you feel like you're some evangelist. You want to save the whole world. Another time you want to fight for some group. You may even say there is no God. This is a conscious mind. Making impulsive decisions all by itself. But a tree of life is planted eastern side of the garden. Your subconscious mind, which again, the infinite mind, the divine mind, the one flowing of living waters, the water that you drink and do not thirst anymore the water of life and so they say in the kingdom of heaven one may be able to lay in a field with a lion and a lion will harm him not the lion represents the beast, the ego mind, the conscious mind, which always sets man on fire through our own desires and passions. But a virgin, the woman, who represents the subconscious mind, when the subconscious and the conscious mind come together then you can enter the kingdom of heaven where nothing can harm you no more because now you live in peace and harmony not only with yourself but with the entire universe And so you are told when two agree together nothing they ask for will be denied. Everything they ask for will be given. Because now there is no personality. The ego personality has now dissolved into the subconscious mind. The infinite mind. The mind of God. Because the Lord is inside of you. You see. And so Jesus walks on water. Which simply means he walks in truth. The ego personality cannot do this. Because he walks in darkness. And it's through our own darkness that we are often finding ourselves drowning. 
in our own decision make, making, through our own human intelligentsia. So when one finds himself trying to walk on water, you can try it. I promise I will not laugh. It is a, there is a universal law and that is against the law of gravity. When you walk in truth, the ocean, the sea represents the infinite mind of God. That is why Jesus will tell you, I myself can do nothing because he's not operating from the personality, the ego, the conscious mind, but the subconscious mind. You see consciousness. And so spirituality, it is about getting to know yourself. Claiming your destiny. Because you see, in the story of Jacob and Esau, two nations will be in their mother's womb. One represents the flesh. And the one that represents the flesh, Esau, will be a hunter in the open field. That is a body. But I said one who stay in the tent. And the one that stayed in the tent was loved by his mother. So Jacob ended up being called Israel. For he has seen God face to face and lived. There is always two parts of you. Your physical self and the one that stays in a tent, which is your soul. This is the one God loves. The son of God. Who is wearing the earthly garment. In Egypt, I said, Isis said, I have given birth to a son, and yet no mortal has lifted my veil. In the Bible, you have God also saying, No mortal can see my face and live. The flesh has no part. In the presence of God. It is a soul. That would inherit. The kingdom. And so Jacob stole his brother's inheritance. The flesh will be buried. Burnt. Or even drown in the ocean. But the spirit always lives on. The Son of God never dies. Do not let anyone deceive you. This is the concept of know thyself. So I hope you understand these stories and its meanings. Because even in the Bible they said Jesus never uttered a word without spoken in parables. Parables cause people to think. Inner meanings. Esoteric knowledge. Nothing must be taken literally. Because in fact, once you understand that Paul told you the Abraham story is an allegory. You will come to understand if there was no Sarah, there's no Abraham, there's no Isaac. 
And so that alone will destroy the lineage of Jesus. You cannot have Jesus. If your grand, great, 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 great grandparents did not exist, you cannot be here. You are only here through their loins, their lineage. You see consciousness. And so freedom is yours. And you must take it. The mind is very powerful. Whatever you believe will become your reality. Such is the nature of things. And so you are told to renew your mind. The old ideas you had in your mind must be removed. Just as you are told in your Bible, you cannot put new wine. In an old wine, suck. It just doesn't work. New ideas must come into your mind at this age of Aquarius. We are in a new age now. Peace.